Oh, gross. All right, so today I'm gonna to be doing a video on the cam phaser replacement on the 3.5 EcoBoost. They're notorious for that cam phaser cold start rattle. Uh, I'm gonna show you why it does it, how it does it, and how to replace all the phasers with these uh, updated design ones and get this taken care of. Let's get into it. All right, first thing, disconnect battery. Okay, removing the upper portion of the air box first. Moving engine cover. I had I got the wheels off and then I'll be able to access the clamps that go from the uh, intercooler piping to the turbos right there passenger side uh, turbo intake piping getting this out of the way this would be the charge piping that's gonna come out next all right got this pipe out this really did not want to let go so I just unbolted it from the valve cover. <clears throat> okay, so all this is in preparation to get the valve covers out first. Um, so I've got the, you know, charge and turbo intake piping out of the way on the passenger side. Uh, so I'm kind of just working on removing the harness now, getting it on, you know, unconnected from everything. Bunch of wire ties. So some of this went down low. I got it all unplugged. Coil packs, everything like that, undone. So now this whole harness can come up. I just set off to the side. I'm gonna start working on the driver harness. And looks like this pipe could actually, you know what, I should just get out of the way. I should, so I don't have to fight it. I'm gonna get the this driver side turbo piping out of the way, this harness, any vacuum lines, all this emission stuff. Uh, and then I'm gonna work on getting the intake manifold off, valve covers off, go from there. In these this uppler up getting the upper coupler off was a pain i found it to be much easier just to remove the throttle body with the throttle body off the intake manifold i was then able to slide it off um because the piping when you try to pull it off the throttle it just ends up hitting the fan shroud so with the throttle body out it's only four like eight millimeters throttle body out you know unplug your your charge piping sensors here i already undid the coupler down below so now i can remove this charge pipe and we're starting to starting to make some progress here okay so you know i'm on to the driver's side uh right now i'm working on removing all the emission stuff i think it's like your evap purge maybe um these little four clips you just pop out the clip and then you can remove it so i had let's see here i had this one going to the intake manifold this one going to one of the turbo one of the boost pipes. Um, you've got a main connector back there in the back. You've got an electrical electrical connector here. And then I should be able to pull it off this bracket and just remove this whole like thing as like an assembly kind of. Yeah, so you go ahead and just get this out of the way, set it off to the side, because I'm trying to get down, simplify this whole driver's side area. You know, in combination of moving the harness out of the way, emissions, pipes, hoses. I am gonna remove the rest of the turbo piping because it kind of swoops in front of the timing cover. Um, so yeah, that's where I'm at so far. Okay, so same thing with all this. Uh, these are actually vacuum hoses because it ties into the brake booster. All this can come off as a unit. Like I said, off the intake manifold, this one came off turbo piping as well. You've got an electrical connector here. Then you've got your brake booster. And then let's see if there's anything else. Oh, this clips in here to the air box. Let me see if I can't just pull that. Oh, release the vacuum out of the booster. That's what that sound was. And this has been stubborn, got it. Okay, this can come out as a unit as well. Okay, so with the upper hose undone, out of the way, the coolant reservoir out of the way, I was able to remove this big freaking charge pipe that runs across the whole front of the engine. Um, this one right here. Yeah, that's not gonna wanna come out unless you make some room for it to come out. Uh, okay, so with that out of the way, we can start. I think this is the last of the turbo piping we have to remove. I got it pulled off the turbo. 
these clamps you're going to want to get to through the fender liners and it looks like i have some goofy connection here i gotta figure out looks like it's like a twist lock all right so next i'm gonna go ahead and pull off the upper intake manifold it's just a bunch of eight millimeter bolts unplug your map sensor back there we've got a harness kind of clipped into the back side of it uh and then yeah just lift up and out Should expose all this good stuff um surprisingly the runners go through the valve covers interesting coil packs are unplugged ready to pull out um i'm gonna have to remove the high pressure fuel pump and that hard line over here should be just about it after that go ahead and pull out our dipstick okay driver valve covers coming off parameter of it is just a bunch of uh 10 millimeters and a lot of harness clips clicking into it get this out of the way so once you have the covers off it'd be a good idea to go ahead um, throw some rags over it and now I'm going to go ahead and cover up the portholes because I didn't realize went through the valve cover so yeah you want to keep this clean try to keep crap from getting in here so yeah here's driver's side next up passenger side so like I said onto the passenger side this one's a little different uh, got to remove the high pressure fuel pump it's two t45 torx bolts c30 torx bolt up here you got to remove this hard uh, high pressure line and then the low pressure feed has a 3 8 quick connect to the back side and then with all that undone just lift up and out probably a good idea to replace these seals in here and you're gonna have a gasket here as well that should be included in your in your kits so all right now from here you know as long as the harnesses are out of the way maybe uh might be some zip ties i gotta take care of but i can start working on the perimeter of the 10 millimeter bolts and same deal as the, as the driver's side just work around the perimeter and start prying off so passenger side removing the valve cover let's see here there we go go ahead and get that all covered up cover up your intake ports and uh from here we can start working on the front side of the engine start working on accessories hoses and you know making way to get the timing cover off so yeah let me go ahead and cover up this side and we'll move on to the next step quick update um obviously intakes off both valve covers are off now we're ready to start tackling the timing cover i'm going to start just removing anything that's in the way this bracket thermostat uh, water pump maybe these pulleys and just anything i see that's in the way front of the timing cover okay so you are gonna have to remove the crank pulley obviously it goes through the timing cover you're gonna need a puller something like this uh the bolt was an 18 millimeter with the bolts out you run down this rod down the center and it, it's kind of like a it presses the pulley out i guess i'll link all those stuff in the description if you need these these things are kind of cheap now they're affordable so uh with the pulley kind of pressed off the snout of the crank just comes off real easy just like that so what's left here we've got alternator we've got belt tensioner we've got looks like maybe maybe the ac compressor i'm not quite sure if that's bolted through the cover but we shall find out so quick recap i did not have to remove the compressor i did have to remove the alternator it was two 15 millimeters there was a big bolt down there and a nut up top had to kind of like swing it I'd even unconnect the connector or the power wire, just set it off to the side. Um, it was kind of a pain getting the 13s along the bottom. This harness is in the way, but you can pry it out of the way or do whatever you gotta do to just make room to get to those 13s. I've already cracked it loose. There's nothing else holding it. Make sure you get all the hidden, hidden 13s. Like often there's recesses here. There's one there, there's one in there. There's one like under here, just, you shouldn't have to force it off. If it's too hard to pry, more than likely you're, you're missing a bolt. You should crack loose nice and easy. Okay, so, fuck it, you wanna record? Or you wanna pull it out? All right. All right. There we go. So here we are with the cover off and everything exposed. 
Um, just out of curiosity, I was rotating it. Everything will spin, but then this phaser snaps back every so often. Watch. There. I don't know if you caught that, but this phaser just snapped. Kind of just rotate it quickly. Um, but, okay, when I go counterclockwise, they, all the cams will move. Because here's your phaser, right? And then this is your cam bolts. They're all going to go counterclockwise, except for this one. Look, I'm going to start spinning. I'm spinning, but the the bolt is not moving. There, it just started to move. But this guy moves. It doesn't hesitate. It moves counterclockwise. There's no hesitation. See that? Oop! That phaser just just popped again. Okay, so here I am uh, following these instructions. Real quick, it says to install the crank pulley bolts. You're gonna rotate the motor until the keyway is at 11 o'clock. There's a keyway on the snout of the crankshaft. Um, so that's when we at 11 o'clock. And once that is at 11, you can slide in your camshaft holders right here. And I got my kit on Amazon. Um, it was like 40 bucks. Driver's side is already in place. Let me show you how that works. First of all, the keyway is gonna be this. This is your keyway. So right here, we've got our 11 o'clock. It's not quite up uh, uh, 12 o'clock. A little bit off to the side. And that allows you to slide on your camshaft lockers. This all, they're just these plates. You just slide them on right here on the camshafts and that's gonna hold your camshaft timing. Cause once you undo the, the chain and the sprockets, um, your camshafts can be under tension from the valve springs and whatnot. They can snap, uh, they can roll one way or the other. So this will just keep your camshafts nice and timed up. Uh, just from looking at it, um, this phaser, the, the camshaft, it's uh, acting really weird. The camshaft doesn't look like it's truly lined up. This one does look up and down, but this one I might actually have to rotate. And all it is, the plate is locking onto these flat sides right here. See how the cam is flat here? There's these flat sides. So the plate just slides straight down. And like I said, this one looks a little bit rotated uh, clockwise. Just from this phaser being jacked up, this camshaft is not actually in time. Uh, so let me, this one's slid on, camshafts are locked. Let me work on rotating this cam and getting this locking plate on. Okay, so first things first, uh, it wants us to remove this right-hand side timing chain guide. So looks like we're just gonna have, it says two bolts. Okay, here and here. And then this is probably a pin that's gonna slide off of, looks about eight millimeters. And then after you unbolt that chain guide, uh, it wants you to go ahead and remove the tensioner. Everything looks to be eight millimeters, it says two bolts there. And I already grabbed them. Bam, bam. Let's get this tensioner out of here. With the tensioner removed, everything's nice and uh, nice and sloppy. Now we can slide our guide right off. Same thing with this one. I might have to make some slack on the chain on this side to get this guide off. So check this out guys all the cams are nice and snug but then when you come to the suspect one you can clock that sucker like super easily yeah it's not supposed to do that so yeah here's our culprit right here okay so here we are we've got the new phasers on new updated design we've got our cam locking plates installed we've got our sprockets still at 11 o'clock on that keyway we got it marked up um yeah now it's time for reassembly time to put in the tensioners the timing chain guides and the chains so let's go ahead and get started quick update on where we're at the keyway remained at 11 o'clock the whole time 
cam locks remained in the whole time. Everything is uh, installed. Timing chains, phasers, um, guides, everything is in place. Um, so from here, I went ahead and installed new seals on the timing cover. There's three main seals. You've got a um, water pipe seal, you've got a, the crank seal, and then you have a seal that's for the crank position sensor. It's actually right here. This just kind of pushes through the timing cover and there's like this grommet. You know what, let me just show you. Okay, water pipe seal, crank seal, crank position seal. Those are the old ones. Uh, so from here, we can go ahead and put our gasket maker. Don't forget your boss is here, here, here. All these little holes, not just the perimeter, but all these little spots as well. So, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put some silicone. Put it on, let it set up overnight, and continue reassembly in the morning. All right, our timing covers had the chance to set up and dry. So now it's gonna be time to start reassembling. I'm gonna go ahead and do new uh, new valve cover gaskets. I put the intake manifold on, put all, you know, I think just the alternator, crank pulley, the idler tensioner, all that. Um, yeah, just, just reverse order, man. I'm gonna start putting things back together. Here's one of our valve cover gaskets, if you want to know. Let's take a look at the other one. Here's our other side. So anytime you have a seam, like in this case we have where the timing cover butts up against the uh, cylinder head, you've got a seam here where they join. It's always a good idea to put a layer of uh, whatever you use in the gasket maker, silicone. We call this pookie. Uh, so yeah, dab, little dab there, little dab there. Just going to make sure it seals up uh, properly. Got the passenger cover on, working our way to the driver's side. Everything just reverse order. Everything you saw me do, I'm just doing backwards. Same thing here. I'm gonna clean up the seam and uh, lay down some fresh gasket maker here. Don't want any, any reason for this to leak oil. So anytime you have the engine open like that, it's a good idea to go ahead and change the oil, get any debris that could have potentially gotten in. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean off all the residue. This expedition did have a timing cover leak as well. Um, so I got a lot of uh, residuals to spray off and clean all this. So this is coolant oil. I'm gonna get it all nice and cleaned up. Drain the oil, I'm gonna leave that drain for a good bit.